Hi, this is Jason Rohr, and this is the sixth tutorial video for the controller interface of Sleep is Death. This video shows advanced use of depth sorting when composing multiple objects into a scene. Now, for the most part, when you're using Sleep is Death, you never need to think about depth sorting because it's handled automatically for all the objects that you drag and drop into a scene and all the objects that you manipulate within a scene. However, to achieve certain special effects or to achieve a greater degree of control over how your objects are composed, understanding how depth sorting works can be really helpful. So what are the basic rules of depth sorting for Sleep is Death? All objects are depth sorted based on the positions of their anchors on the screen, not on the positions of their sprites. So bigger objects um, that have lots of sprites hanging off their anchors, you need to pay attention to the positions of their anchors. Objects are sorted based on the vertical positions of their anchors on the screen. Objects that have, are anchored further down on the screen are drawn in front of objects that are anchored further up on the screen. We can see this in effect as we move the player's anchor relative to the anchor of this turtle. If the player's anchor is at the same vertical position of the turtle, the player is drawn in front. But as soon as the player's anchor moves vertically above the anchor of the turtle, the player is going to be drawn behind the turtle. If we turn off the grid here for a second, we can see that in effect a little bit more clearly. In front, and once vertically above, the player is behind. For a larger object, like a house, we can see that effect even more dramatically. So the house has this anchor down at the bottom in front of the door here. And that means that if the player is at the same level as the door, the player is going to be in front of the house. So if the player is standing with his anchor right in front of the door or standing next to the door, the player can stand out in front of the house and have a conversation. As soon as the player moves vertically above that anchor, the player can be drawn behind. So this is nice because it allows players and other objects to walk both in front of objects and behind them. Now the player's object is always drawn in front of any object that's vertically positioned the same as itself. So a player's object will never be behind an object that has the same vertical position. However, other objects, non-player objects, are sorted based on the order in which they were added to the scene. So in the case of this turtle, which was added first, and the house, which was added later, if the turtle is at the same vertical anchor position as the house, the turtle is drawn behind the house. And if the turtle moves down below, it's drawn in front again, and again, if it's up above, just like other objects, it is drawn um, up behind the house. So what if we want to remedy this? Let's say we don't want to worry about the order in which we dragged and dropped all these objects into the scene, and the house is really background scenery, and we want the turtle and the player to be able to kind of stand in front of the house like this and have a conversation. In order to force this house into the background, we can lock it, like I, did, like I showed you before in an earlier tutorial. So let's lock that house. Once an object is locked, if it's at the same vertical position as unlocked objects, it's drawn behind those objects. So the turtle is now, in, because the turtle's unlocked, it's drawn in front of the house that's at the same vertical position. Once the turtle's down below, it's still drawn in front. And if the turtle moves up b above a locked object, it's again drawn behind, just like you'd expect it to be. So this object is locked into the scene, but it's not like it's locked all the way onto the background room. It's locked into a certain spot vertically in the room. And that allows us to uh, differentiate between objects that are meant to be background objects and objects that are meant to move around and go in front and behind other objects. OK, so those are the basics. Let's unlock uh, this house again so that we can delete it from our scene and uh, get back to this. Let's go back to this un uh, basic underwater scene here. So those are the basics of depth sorting, how depth sorting works. Now we can use depth sorting to achieve certain special effects. Let's say that we wanted to create some objects that were always going to be behind other objects, especially in this underwater scene. That might be nice because we'd want some something in the background. Let's say like a tower of rocks to go back in the background behind everything that's swimming down here in the water. Now we could do that with the room editor by editing the background tiles here and creating something that looks like rocks and kind of making a stack of them. But editing complex objects using a tile editor is a bit tedious and not as nice as dragging and dropping layers and sliding layers around and so on, which we can do in the object editor. So let's try and create an object that is always in the background. Let's open up the object editor. Let's clear out this object. Let's start creating an object um, that's called rocks. And let's open up the sprite editor and pick a color. That looks like a good color for some rocks. And uh, clear this out and draw something very simple that just looks like uh, might be like a rock that would be part of a rock pile. OK, so that looks good. Fill it in. Um, flush it out a little bit down here like this. And use the erase tool to erase a little bit right there. Um, let's give it a name so we can find it later. Rock. So that's a single rock um, that's going to be part of our compound object of rocks. So if we were to start making this, let's just start making this rock tower um, with the anchor right at the bottom. Um, just like the house. So this rock tower, if it was drawn at the bottom of the pond, would be just like a house. If an object is uh, down um, at the same level as it, it'll be drawn in front. But as soon as an object um, moves uh, up above, it'll start being drawn behind. 
let's draw a few more rocks onto here like this. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That's a good rock tower. Um, but now, just like with the house, if this object um, would be drawn with this anchor like it is, um, it would not be drawn correctly. It won't be drawn behind everything else. So remember with the turtle, um, we wanted to drag it all relative to its anchor. Um, by switching to the anchor layer, we can do that. So we can drag this object around relative to its anchor. Let's zoom out a little bit, and let's drag it down so that its anchor is way above it. So that means because its anchor is going to be so high on the screen, it's going to be drawn behind almost everything that's down near it. Okay, so let's save this rock, this rock pile rocks, and now we can drag it out onto the scene and drop it, and look at where its anchor is. Its anchor is way up here. Um, it's still kind of drawn down near the bottom of the screen, um, but now because its anchor is so high, everything will be drawn in front of it, uh, unless something gets up above it. And in this case, um, the player and the turtle uh, would never come up out of the water in this scene anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. And the player is always in front, and likewise the turtle is always in front. So let's um, make this rock uh, pile a little bit faded out. And uh, let's add another one over here. Make it a little bit faded as well into the background. Let's fade this one a little bit more. OK, so those are looking good. Let's lock those into the scene. Um, turn locks on. Lock the one into the scene as well. So we don't have to worry about those anymore. Now uh, let's open up our stack again. Grab this rock. Let's say look, now we want one stack of rocks to always be in the foreground in front of everything else. So let's edit that object again and drag everything relative to the anchor by switching to the anchor layer. And let's let these, these rocks kind of actually stick down into the foreground of the scene like this. Um, and close the editor. Now we can drag this version of the rocks down. Now look at where this one's anchored, right there. Um, so if the player were to swim at the same level as these rocks would be in front and then get behind once it got vertically above it, um, let's actually drag this one down so people can really tell it's in the foreground. Drag it down onto the bottom like this. Let's put this one over here like this. OK, and that one will be fully um, opaque because it's in the foreground. Um, let's anchor it into position now so we don't have to worry about it. So now we have um, some rocks that are in the foreground in front of both the turtle and the player, and some rocks that are in the background. Now let's say that we wanted to create um, an even more uh, dramatic effect where there's some water the, the player and the turtle here don't really look like they're underwater. They kind of look like they're pasted on top of the water. And we might want to make them look like they're really underwater. So let's, let's think about creating a transparent water um, object that's going to go in front of everything else um, that will make these things look more like they're underwater. So let's open up the room uh, editor, pick one of these water tiles, open up the tile editor, and pick a good spot in our color well here to grab the room color. Let's grab this room color, add it to our color well. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the, uh, the watercolor selected. And if we open up the object editor now and try to start, try to start painting some water that's this dark blue color, we're going to be painting it on top of this dark blue background, which is the default because of where the, where the current object is located. If we move it up, we could paint it on a light blue background. Um, let's do that. Let's paint on the light blue background so we can really see what we're doing. And open up the object editor, clear this out, start creating a new object called water. And let's um, create a new sprite, which is just going to be a solid uh, blue block. And let's um, fill it with blue, close it, drag it out. And let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see what we're actually doing here as we drag and drop. Drag that one out, drag that one out, drag another one out. Let's make four layers of water like this. And let's make the bottom one pretty dark but mostly getting more and more transparent as they go up a little bit higher and higher. Um, so a nice gradation of darker and darker water as we get closer and closer to the bottom. OK, so that's looking pretty good. Let's turn the anchor, the uh, flashing off. Let's make this one a little bit lighter to make sure that we can really see the object that's down there. Um, OK, so that's looking pretty good. So um, let's um, move everything relative to the anchor a little bit more. Um, so that, let's switch to the bottom layer and move everything up by one so that uh, the water will start uh, where the ground stops. Okay, so that looks good. Now we can drag and drop um, these objects into our scene um, and they will be in front of everything else. Drag a bunch more. I'm not going to do all of them because I don't want to waste a bunch of time, but let's just do some in the center here like this. OK, so now we have these all in. Let's uh, lock them. Let's lock them all so we don't have to deal with them anymore. 
Okay, so they're there, and now the player can move relative to them. And let's test this scene really quickly. From the player's point of view, now when they're swimming around in the water, as they go further and further down, they get darker and darker. So once they're up here at the surface, they're bright, and the turtle and the player, once they're down here near the bottom, are, are murkier and murkier. Um, so that is uh, exactly how we want it to look, and that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you.